like choking it down with her sobs like right there's only one thing for it. i've got to get out of this town minus friendship uh minus more friendship guy with the beret this is not about you minus love Hello from the void, it's Rose. Welcome back to my channel and to my not so berry legacy. Today, we are doing part three of our Rose generation. And I realize I should probably recap the rules at some point, but we'll probably do that next time because there's a lot that we need to do today. Um, we've got three days until the twins' birthdays and we're gonna try and play through them all um, so we can move on to the next phase of Carmine's life, which is probably gonna see her go to university, but let's see how that all plays out. How's her relationship with Blaine gonna develop? Will she be affected by her brother's romance with her ex? Will Floor set the house on fire? Let's go find out. Sibling boogie, sibling boogie. We're rejoining the Spectres on the twins' last day at high school and Carmine has woken up feeling dazed instead of sad and she's just kind of slightly derangedly dancing in the kitchen whilst Crimson tries to like function around her. Also, there are a lot of real smelly things in this house. One of which is Carmine, actually, so we're gonna pop her in the shower. She's emerged from the shower sad. She's had time to remember she's sad, so she's gonna eat some cake for breakfast and awkwardly stare at her brother who has, you know, not exactly transgressed, but, you know, definitely done something a bit weird in um, asking Daisy to be with him. Carmine's feeling hurt about the end of the relationship, but most of those feelings are directed at Daisy, not Crimson. I was actually really worried that this whole scenario was going to completely destroy their friendship um, because they've always been really close but it seems as though although she is devastated like she doesn't want to trash her relationship with her brother so she's definitely like overly blaming Daisy for the breakup which is not fair or healthy but I'm like secretly kind of pleased because I do want Carmen and Crimson to like have some sort of relationship as adults and it would be hard if they were like had the betrayed mood look um, she has a lot of mood look. she's gonna go cry out in bed. And then they've all gone to school, which leaves us with some time for um, Floor to parent Cochineal, or completely ignore him and make- what are you even making, babe? Like, I did not tell you to cook. You've got to go to work in a sec. Like, wh what are you making? I have literally no idea. Oh, it's chocolate? I don't know what it is. Lunch of sadness. Some other kid threatened Cerise and took her lunch. She's been crying in the office. Uh, well, Floor's not going to take that. Find the kid or she will. Raw. Like, she might not be the most attentive parent, but she does, like, care about them and not want anyone to mess with them. Baked chocolate mousse. Sure. Why not do that at nine in the morning instead of doing what I wanted you to do, which was, like, raising your child? Oh, well. We've only got to deal with her for another two minutes and we are going to send her to work. It's the end of the day and Carmine has finally got rid of her sad mood and is feeling energised for the time being at least. Maybe now would be a good time for her to do something productive like take care of her needs, have a conversation with her brother about what went down or you know just sniff that egg. Mmm, egg. So I just wanted to check out like, so Carmine is feeling, has a lot of feelings relating to Daisy but she does have this furious um, sentiment which is problematic because Crimson obviously wants to be around Daisy. Daisy also comes to our house either by coming home from school interactions or um, oh, I just pop around interaction basically every day and every time she turns up uh, Carmine is instantly like fuming now. So I just really quickly want to get Crimson and Daisy together properly because obviously they are end game for me at least and I want to send them off into story progression with like the best possible chance but I also can't have Daisy in the house for long periods of time so uh, Carmine is I think like out back on the swing of her own volition so these guys can you know have a little bit of time in the kitchen and then I can send send Daisy away um, before Carmine has to like deal with it anymore. Yes that's that's definitely a normal way to run a household. Yes, yes. And the good news is, despite the fact that Crimson appears to have asked Daisy with some sort of like flying bike in the interaction, she has said yes. Carmine has ignored her bladder need and stayed on the swing for a really long time, but she does also have a whim to organise a date. So I do want to arrange a little something for her and Blaine, and I have an idea inspired by their difficult conversations around why Blaine thinks they won't work. Oh girl, no. You had finished on the toilet before you made that phone call. Gross. Anyway, putting that aside, um, 
Although Carmine's arranged the date, how I'm playing this is that Blaine asked her to meet her somewhere new. They normally just go to like a bar or a coffee shop. And Blaine's been like, I want to show you where I come from. I want to show you my old neighborhood. Like this is where I grew up. And this is also what I mean when I say that we're different kinds of people. Like obviously Carmine's lived her whole life in, um, in Strangerville and in like the nice neighborhood at the top of Strangerville where all of the creepy scientists and whatnot live whereas Blaine lives downtown but still downtown Strangeville is significantly nicer than Evergreen Harbour when it hasn't been cleaned up so I feel like Blaine would be like look not everywhere is like Strangeville not everyone is like you a lot of the world is like this like yeah in theory it could be pretty but it's full of trash it's polluted it's disgusting there are no jobs there are no opportunities like this is how people live this is how I lived until like I moved to Strangeville and Carmine being Carmine is just like planting one on her like thank you so much for showing me this and Blaine is like I don't think you get it. I want to do something with my life but I don't know what my opportunities are. You're just talking about going to college like it's an accepted thing like if I wanted to go I would have to like take out all these loans and do all this stuff and like I'm not gonna do that and Carmine's like you can do whatever you want just believe in yourself and Blaine's like seriously do you even hear what I'm saying I'm trying to point out that there's a lot in the world that needs changing and yeah we're young but like you need to start getting real um otherwise you're just always gonna live in your bubble and never see anything meaningful and Carmine not necessarily ready to hear that yet so as ever their relationship is two steps forward one step back and Carmine is left like Blaine's probably like look just think about it I'm gonna go and Carmine is left on the trash strewn waterfront of Evergreen Harbour maybe feeling a little bit differently about the world back home Floor and Crimson are watching a horror movie with Cotch and Eel Cerise is like what are you people like uh, the answer is I, I don't know. This is incredibly inappropriate, but also possibly the first time Floor spent an evening with her kids, so yay! Saturday was a pretty bitty and uneventful day, starting of course with some thinking about herself. So I'm going to jump through it quite quickly. Carmine woke up on the morning of the flower festival, the last Saturday of her teenagerdom, feeling sad and horny. She had some sad breakfast on a single place setting she laid for herself like a weirdo, had a cry in bed. Um, twice actually but then she was feeling okay which was a plus so we decided we would invite our least drama filled person over which is young Marigold made for me by Morgan and Marigold has the unflirty trait which um, I asked Morgan to give her so that she would just you know leave us alone a little bit um, and we asked them to do some group cooking and they spent like literally an hour and a half like standing awkwardly around and not doing it so that went really well so eventually I gave up on it and instead had them have a chat and interact with the flower bunny which went horribly because Carmine was again feeling sad by this point and yeah things just didn't go particularly well but on the plus side Cerise is finally having something she wants happen she's um, interacting with the bunny yay and we got her to do like a little egg hunt and stuff I really wish you could just like cancel the strange bar interactions because it really annoys me, it always takes up a spot on my wheel. What the happen what what happened there? Marigold tried to lay one on Carmine out of the blue. They have almost no friendship and no romance whatsoever, so I don't know where that came from. Blaine maybe asked her like almost sister to see what happens if you try and kiss her. Floor has a pristine <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's a shining beacon of positivity in the community. The community needs to take a good, hard look at itself because no, no, honeys, no. Carmine is ignoring Cochineal's need, like he's got the dirty diaper need, and instead bending her arm through her back and singing to him. But look, we've got the whole family in one room. This never ever happens. Oh, just sitting in groups with their backs to each other. Avoiding eye contact as the sound of broken plumbing washes over them in the background. I'm gonna get Carmine to text Blaine and Floor to... Wait, what? There's a cleaner toddler with a vacuum cleaner option. That feels like a horrible plan. Let's not do that. We might lose him up there. And instead we're gonna to go to um, Blaine's house. She's offered to cheer us up. Let's see how this goes. Normally they just fight. If this pair of facial expressions doesn't perfectly sum up where we're at right now, Blaine's like, 
this is not really what I signed up for. I thought we were just gonna have some fun, but I feel like I'm having to educate her about life and Carmine is just like, life is so hard. Like, I never knew it would be this hard. I just want to date and have fun and not have to think about how broken yeah. the world is and how my privilege level might be giving me access to different things. It's a lot to think about. And Blaine's like trying really hard to be nice about it for once because Carmine is so sad. So yeah, they're having like quite functional interactions. Nothing particularly romantic going on. Finchwick Fair. So what? We're not in Finchwick, are we? Carmine's back on complaining about her life by the look of it. And Blaine's like, how about you take this flower? No. Thanks, babe. Now what? I need to keep, remember to do some of these charismatic interactions because I keep forgetting I'm meant to be building my skill. Okay. Now what? Nothing. Birds wheeling. Tumbleweeds. Carly's spirit is fading away. Piss off, Carly. So they basically froze. It also looks like Yarrow, who as Blaine and Marigold's guardian has died, which makes a lot of sense of why Blaine is feeling particularly unsympathetic to Carmine's plight in inverted commas. You know, they are literally fending for themselves and Carmine is making a mess of her life, despite having every opportunity. Um, I don't know if they were glitching or if they just literally ran out of things to say to each other, but I did end up sending Carmine home because she's got a prep for her birthday tomorrow. And also I was bored. Crimson has Daisy over, so Carmine is really sadly making some breadsticks to try and get her like flower festival things completed. Um, and she seems like quite proud of herself, but also really sad. Look at her just like pointedly not looking at them, eating her breadstick, like choking it down with her sobs. This used to be me, but I didn't actually want it. Anyway, so she's like, right, there's only one thing for it. I've got to get out of this town. Got to get out of this town. Dolly Parton's Christmas on the square. Um, so I'm going to have her go out and research some universities. Um, there is the Foxbury Institute, which is more like techie, I think. Um, as we do have to do politics with Carmine, I'm probably looking for like more of a humanities base. So I'm looking more, I think, at University of Brightchester. Also, Carmine doesn't really think things through. So I'm feeling like, you think of uni, you think of like, you know, old buildings, ivy on the walls, frats and sororities and all that kind of thing. Although I know they don't exist in Sims, so I think I'm probably going to have her go to Brightchester. And I feel like, despite the fact she's definitely not qualified for any scholarship, she'd be like, I can I can do this on my own, I don't need money from my mum, right? Like, what Blaine said is, isn't true, I'm I'm a catch for, for a higher education institute. Uh, spoiler alert, she's not. What's going on upstairs? Oh my, okay, well, that's... Crimson Daisy be be um doing some naughty stuff in Floor's bed. Carmine, don't don't go in there. You're already feeling wounded and very sad, and we do not want you to die of sadness. That would be a real bad way to end my challenge. Go to sleep, sleep sweetly, my princess, ahead of your your last day in this house of green menace. It's the twins' birthday today. We've got two days until Cerise and Cochineal age up, so we won't actually be here for that, but we'll come back and sort their faces out. Um, I'm excited to see what they look like um, and then Floor, we've got 16 days left with and we do need to keep an eye on when Floor ages up just because we have to have her meet the yellow air so when I have a baby for Carmine will be slightly influenced by how old Floor is so I just need to keep track. I'm probably also going to turn off aging for a little bit while we're at uni just because that thing takes so long and while I'm probably not going to keep her there for the whole time like I think we might have her drop out maybe. Um, I don't want her to like lose her entire young adult age group while she is there. Anyway, we have had Floor make a cake and we're going to try and get the whole family together for a little breakfast. <sighs> Carmine, of course you're not going to sit with everyone else. Of course you're not. Crimson's excited for his birthday. He's like, I can move out, I can move out, I can be a functional boy. Um, anyway, we are going to do some musical chairs. I wanted to try and get the opportunity to get Floor to give them advice. Anger management. Um, scream into a pillow. Nothing practical for Floor. She doesn't exercise really, so she's not going to advise that. But yeah, I want to try and get them to like spend the day interacting with each other a little bit. I will get Floor to invite over all of the uh, baby daddies. So we'll have Curtis over and we will have Sini over. And we have quite a long list of things to do today. So we need to age the twins up. We need to set up Crimson for his adult life in like an apartment um, with Daisy. 
we need to move Sini in. So when we move Carmine out, Flora isn't left alone with the children that she has no idea how to take care of. And, you know, just generally. Then obviously we need to get Carmine set up. I've also got some backstage admin to do to set up her university course mates. So that some sims that other people made for me that Carmine is probably going to date for her aspiration are in game and ready. So that'll be exciting. All right, Sini is here. Curtis should also be here. Carmine is naked. That's fine, only for normal reasons. There we are, Curtis. Oh, look at his little white trainers. Just like bopping in. He's got proper dad bod these days, which I heartily approve of. Right, come on, guys. All, we've got everyone in the same room. Cur Where's Crimson? Crimson! Would you come back here, please? Curtis says, hey, you actually visited. Well, technically you visited us. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to invite Carmine is the oldest, so we're going to invite Blaine over to do Carmine's birthday, and then we'll invite Daisy over after. <laughs> Apparently she got some conflict resolution for like giving her a peck on the cheek, which seems like a weird game mechanic, but she's definitely still not feeling that things great. She's like, ugh, what, didn't know the right things to say, didn't know the right things to do. See what you're doing. Crimson's asking for advice. I texted someone, they didn't text back immediately, it's been an hour. Um, yeah, I don't know who he asked for that advice, but I think both of his parents are like a little bit. Go straight away. I realised that I didn't actually have a photograph of Carmine and Blaine and I want to have like a little gallery of like all the people she's messed around with. Especially as there isn't like a collection for this generation. Anyway, it's candle time. Woo! Curses is just, get out of my shot, get out of her body. Ew. And she has officially aged up and we will be giving her her third rose generation treat. Treat? Her third rose generation trait. Um, blowing a vuvuzela in her ear. Sini, if you touch my cake before Crimson can use it, so help me God, I will boot you back to the planet 6 am Faster than you can say. Echo, echo, echo. Daisy did come over, but she basically refused to get in shot or stay in the correct room. So maybe she's finally got the picture and is trying to avoid Carmine. But we just booted through Crimson's candles really quickly because we have something we need him to do. I gave him the genius trait because I kind of see him doing something techy because he's into gaming and stuff. Anyway, that's what I went for. And now on to the main thing, which is pop a little knee and lock Daisy in. Now yes, this is soon, and in an ideal world, this would not happen. However, this is The Sims, and my game is possessed by demons, so we have to get that done as quickly as possible before story progression, mask controller, or any of my mods uh, mess up their relationship. But I did want to give them some like little closure moments, so I have had Floor come out to um, you know, do some final bonding with her son and his new fiance. I actually technically got them married because um, I don't trust story progression, but um, for story purposes we're going to pretend they're just engaged at this point. Um, but yeah, Flora's like, cool, you know, good good luck, really happy for you guys, got further into the relationship than I ever did, like, she's never been engaged, she's barely even liked anyone. And there we go, some, you know, nice motherly affection. Would have been nice sooner in life. And I did also send Carmine out. Sini came uninvited. Um, although her and her brother are not their closest at the moment, and she definitely has some weird feeling about Daisy, I do want him to like announce that they're like committed, that they didn't just like do it for fun. And Carmine's like, I'm really happy for you. I hope things work out. Because I feel like she is. She's just sad for herself because that who she is. Yeah. So then we're going to get them moved into a little apartment and then we're gonna bid farewell to crimson so uh daisy moved daisy's family were loaded so i gave them a chunk of money and like 30k to move out with and then they are moving to oasis springs and i just slightly renovated this weird little house um so it's got a master bedroom it's got a little kids room just in case they decide to procreate study and crimson it has been an absolute honor i am sure we will see you in my game going forward because hopefully you will drop in but for now it is time for you to be set to unplayed and go about your business as i had suspected i did have to cheat to add Sini to the household like i couldn't get any of the usual add to family thing but finally we can get her in her human disguise so i don't have to deal with the echo voice anymore yay 
Anyway, so this is um, Hot Mum Sini. And um, Flora seems bed. pretty excited to have her in the house. I'm not gonna like instruct them to do anything. I'm just gonna leave them to it um, and see what happens in the background because we are going to be moving tomorrow, hopefully, assuming the application process goes well, to university with Carmine. She has officially applied um, and we will see what the letter says. I mean, she's gonna get in because that's how the mechanic of this game works. She doesn't actually have an A in school. She only ever made it to B. Um, but we're not going to think about that. Instead, we are going to do something real dumb, which is try and get round Blaine's objections to us and our long-term future by forcing her to come to the town where we hope to go to university and experience student life with us on the grounds that maybe she'll really like it and, you know, be into coming along or at least like accepting that we do have a future. But she has arrived a fuming, which is not an auspicious beginning, although she's now feeling fine. Um, got some beers in. Oh, but we are yelling. You look like a smelly old boo. I don't know what that interaction is meant to thing, but yep, their relationship is already so toxic that the barkeep has noped out. Um, I was finding these bar taps quite stressful to try and film around, so although the conversation was going a bit better, I did just decide to try and move them to a table and like force some conversations about the future. And then things really took a turn on their own. So I did not instruct any of this. I'm just going to let it play out. Minus friendship. I'm trying to like keep track of what the interactions are. Uh, minus more friendship. Guy with the beret. This is not about you. Minus love. Like their, their relationship literally just poured away over the course of about half an hour in game without me actually directing it. Minus more love. So yeah. Um, this was supposed to be sort of like their last chance saloon, but in reality, I've known for ages, they've known for ages, you've all known for ages because it's the serial romantic generation that this is doomed, so it is about time that we ask Blaine to just be friends. You know, okay fine, you don't think we're gonna last, then let's just end things. I'm going off to uni, I want to like enjoy my life, and if you can't be part of that with me, then maybe you should just not be part of it at all and Blaine is fine with that because that's kind of what she already expected but they are now experiencing a deep personal rift which seems a perfect place to end this episode in which many things have happened with Carmine across the bar looking at another thing she has lost thinking about what she could have done differently the answer is everything but realistically nothing because I control you and that's what I'm like and we made it a little bit of a longer episode but i really wanted to get done with the birthday day and everything that came with it and there was a lot of admin there was also even more admin behind the scenes but i'm really enjoying playing this even though i feel a little bit mean at times so i just wanted to like move it on to the next chapter so we can have a little bit less messy floor time and being distracted by my baby crimson and a little bit more focusing on carmine and her goals so we will be joining her at university in the next episode i'd be interested to know in the comments what kind of student do you think she's going to be because she's always just kind of gone along with what's going on around her but obviously uni a lot of really driven people a lot of really lazy people I kind of envision her thinking she is the former but really being the latter and that not panning out for her anyway if you have thoughts on University Carmine what you'd like to see from her uh, do drop it in the comments we're gonna be meeting some more sims made for me by other players in that chapter so I'm really looking forward to getting to it um, if you enjoyed this video please do leave me a little thumbs up just down there and maybe consider subscribing to my channel thank you so so much for watching and I'll see you in the next chapter bye